start if they if they realize that they are in fact not uh, you know they are just a brand that they themselves have created they're right. not a, they're not you know bloody hell jack derrida a <laughs> structuralist are we who's, real? The, who's, the, who's the person who can say these things to you when you go blah 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 we'll all be dead soon and life has no meaning who's the person who goes books you can say if you like anyone anyone could say it to me but the thing is my arguments are brilliantly researched (laughs) and thorough yeah right so uh, okay let's talk right things that we'll have to cover over the course of the show we'll talk about our relationship we'll play a bit of music D. Von T is going to be on now there was this thing Chugga Chugga this is this hit record that we've Mm. discovered on this show Uh, it's this lad Joby who used to be my warm up man Man. He is the embodiment of idiot joy, Joby, in my view. He, like, when he used to do the warm-up for my gigs, he'd just go, Hey, hello, everyone. Okay, all right. Oh, oh, I like round food. Do you like round food? Oh, discos, yo-yos. Oh, they're nice, aren't they? Oh, hey, what's that coming over the hill? Is it a Russell? Oh, is it a Russell? Here he comes. It's actually Russell. Yeah. And I used to just walk out. And people were really upbeat. But it was <laughs> like, they'd cause such bizarre disorders within people's minds in the room like that actually I could get away with anything and it meant that One Lesser Square was a hit show another thing you came on and were quite quite lovely weren't you only as a pilot never did the uh, broadcast version well we just it was because I'm a recluse it was actually meant to be episode one Simon but after we watched your performance (laughs) (laughs) we can't inflict this on MTV's 19 viewers okay so why don't we later on we will be talking to Joe B we are going to make that song Trigger Trigger let's have a little listen to a bit of Trigger Trigger so you can understand it because it does induce a kind of madness a kind of bacchanalian insanity Mm -hmm. because it's so sort of jaunty and lovely let's have a little listen maybe leave our mics up so you can analyse it so have a a listen to this okay alright this is just don't judge yourself on this you played it to Slash and Slash went yeah it's happy But if it's a lot of that, we all think that y'all real me, so sing along with the chicken chicken beat. I'm about to chicken chicken dance that goes with it. Have a look at the video cast if you want to know that dance. Please see the code at the cake. I'm about to chicken 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 how? Because it doesn't make any sense, mm. and it's just like woo! It's just someone go woo! Imagine this playing in these situations: a funeral. Imagine it playing at sort of at a conference where they're talking about the planning of a new car park. Mm. Just nothing will make it. It's disorienting. It makes nothing make sense anymore. And then well, imagine Joby. His name's Joby, and he looks a bit like a jelly baby. So he, and he's called Joby Jelly Baby. So imagine a great big jolly jelly baby doing this. Yeah, it's made me it's made me happy. Yeah, you see, this is the least acerbic I've ever seen you. You should listen to this before you go on Buzzcocks. It would just be a celebration of life. Yes. That's the so we get the idea. That's right. So that is Chugga Chugga. Now what we've decided is to demonstrate sort of some cultural authority mm. is to try and make that a hit record. Do it. Do it. Why not? Will you get behind it, Simon? It's the sort of thing Chris Moyles would do. Right, and we're going to encourage him to do that. We can call Chris Moyles and say, Chris Moyles, encourage, <laughs> encourage this to become a hit record. That's funny, the way you, you heard Chris Moyles' name. And you, the first thing you did is recoil, and then you went, <laughs> yes, we can get Chris Moyles behind this. Is that I good don't recoil at Chris Moyles. <laughs> see, that's the thing, right? I'm quite an ex- I sort of see, like, I don't sort of like, say Ian Islop, for example, that thing where you sort of thought, oh, God, he wasn't very nice. Yes, but you accept show. him as a human. We're all one, essentially. I understand. And, like, them distinctions are kind of meaning- like, sort meaningless. Of, like, right. What else is there? There, there's only distinctions. There's not. There's oneness. Oneness and energy and love and God. Blah, Don't blah, be blah. cynical about that because I'm that's all cynical. there is. I'm saying we've there heard is it. certain we've cynicism heard it, about God and blah blah blah. People don't know it because I think I can engender it in people's consciousnesses. When the UFOs come, it's all happening. It's all being brilliantly prepared. So anyway, but for now, let's just focus on getting sugar sugar to yes. number one. Yeah. We'll do a revolution at some point. But like, when you know, is this revolution going to happen, Russell? Because you're very I would busy say with films. It's probably Probably when I'm sick of fame. Yeah. Uh, they'll probably, it'll probably dovetail with the moment that I've finished making Judd Apatow movies. Yeah, uh, I'm yeah. doing a Shakespeare adaptation. That's a lot wonderful, of pressure. Wonderful. Special on Comedy Central. That's got to get out of the way first. Lot of commitments over there. But then the revolution. Then a very definite revolution. Very clear. Right, OK, I've had my fun. I'm taking my ball in. Stop it, everyone. Put that down. Here's the worry. Mm-hmm. At some point, there'll be a new Russell Brand. 
Yeah, but and people will go, "Why are we listening to the old Russell Brand about this revolution when this guy's got all this these guy's jokes? having such fun?" Yeah, and what about this guy? Well, hopefully that new. I mean, but what's he going to be like? Could, could we tolerate another one? Are we ready? I'm Simon? not saying like a new you. I'm but saying just that occupies just, that cultural just, space exactly. Yeah, but by then I'll be a religious leader. It won't, I'll have undermined the concept of celebrity by then. <laughs> I'll have unravelled it. <laughs> celebrity is ultimately meaningless. I've done that now. <laughs> I love you. Okay, if you want to send us an email. Think about yourself, because there's no one actually here. You're sending an email to a ghost. You might as well go and stand in a cemetery, get a bit of chalk and write on a gravestone, come back, because there's simply nothing we can do. Don't do that in a graveyard, for heaven's sake. That would be a senseless waste of chalk. So, OK, why don't we, we listen to a record, then we'll get on Joby Hart and we'll talk about that. When it goes to Simon, what record would you like to listen to? <laughs> The host of popular music show, never mind the buzzcock, Simon Amster went, nothing. 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 There's no, literally nothing that he wants to leave. He's got no interest in any. You don't actually, like, I'm not, like, sort of, I'm more, much more defined by comedy than music. Like, yeah, sort of, like, yeah. like, if I'm, like, alone somewhere, I'll probably put on 40 Towers or Black Adder or something, right? But, or, like, I do. The VMA. <laughs> put on the VMA. <laughs> as it turns out, the VMA. That was just happened to be on. Like, I don't, it, wasn't, it wasn't on Sky Plus or anything. Um, like, so, but, like, you. Actively, I do like love the Smiths and sort of say I don't know Nick Cave. I don't Nick Drake. actively not like music. Not like actively, it just, just wasn't my thing when I was growing up. Absolutely indifferent right. to it. It's just I some like sounds. it occasionally. I buy a CD occasionally or whatever you're supposed to do now. I download a podcast. I download a <laughs> podcast. I upload a CD. So like what we've got. Uh, when I asked you, eventually when pressed, you said <laughs> oh, so I'll play. Awesome. Oh, I like that song No Air by Jordan Sparks. <laughs> Jordan Sparks was at one person at the VMAs who, like, she came on stage after I'd made some, what some might describe as innocuous jokes <laughs> about her chastity, innocuous, harmless, inoffensive jokes. Because like, what's so mental about them VMAs was that's like, right, I was, me and Matt wrote it and I was like, right, let's just do something that's very easygoing, moderate, very accessible commercial material. Let's just, let's not rock the boat. We'll just, you know, we'll just do something that's very gentle, get this VMAs out of the way and then we'll get on with them films. And turned out that it's divided a nation. So, um, and Jordan Sparks. Maybe like, well, you should have done the good stuff then. This is, it, was, it was really, really fun. If you've not watched it, it's really, really properly funny and gentle, okay. and particularly to see something maybe like you that in that context. you should have shown your true soul. Russell, why did you hold back? It was evident. It was abundant. It was there. But I think I tell you why. If you have a little look at the Bible in Revelations, it says like um, it's going to kick <laughs> off and the world's going to get divided in half when someone comes back. <clears throat> I'm not saying I'm the new Jesus, but look at the evidence. So anyway, one person who did kick off, and that's what I was thinking as well when people were going on about sort of like you know Christianity and that. And that I thought I'm like deeply spiritual and like emanate from a point of actual love and wanting to change the world, not like selling records and moving units. Michel Foucault, the French philosopher, will tell you that uh, Victorian society was interesting because by making se sexual abstinence the core of their society, what they were actually talking about was sex. They were making sex centrifugal to their society. And by marketing like Brittany or whoever or the Jonas Brothers as being virgins, what you're actually doing is focusing on sex. They're not having sex. They're not having sex. They're not having sex. That's what, It's just a marketing device is all it is. It's just a way of making sex evident and centrifugal. It's not about any kind of a deeply moving ethos. I think if there is a Jesus, what he'll want is rage and vengeance. Right? What I picked up from the Bible is an angry Christ raging about at people having a bit of a giggle. So, uh, yeah, one person, though, who did step up, Jordan Sparks, after I'd said something like, sort of like light and frivolous that Richard Briers could have said on ever-decreasing circles, <laughs> she, came up, she came up and went, actually, we shouldn't laugh about chastity rings because some of us ain't sluts equating the idea of sex with promiscuity anyone who's had sex is therefore promiscuous right our next guest to celebrate 30 years of Grange Hill perhaps Grange Hill's greatest ever character Zamo Lee McDonald Lee are you there mate good afternoon Russell yes I am Woo! he's a blast from the past he's come out of the toilet firing he's like butch and Sundance <laughs> hello mate are you okay what's going on Oh, um, I mean, all sad. It's all finished, isn't it, now? We've all, Grange Hill's come to an end now, which is um, after 30 years. Mm. Um, but me and Roland still do stuff together. We still work um, and do some stuff, the hit show and that. What, like? Back in the 80s. I'm still stuck in the 80s. I drive a little Peugeot 205. It's sad, isn't it? No, I like you, and I think you're a really lovely representative of something that was very, very beautiful and integral to all of our childhoods. And plus, look at how upbeat you are. 